guys, welcome back to Kids Church, and guess what? We are starting a brand new series today, and it is called Power Promises. And we are going to be learning about all of the amazing promises that God made to us in the Bible. Now, have you ever been promised something though, and it didn't happen? Like, maybe your parents promised, hey, on the next really warm day, we'll go get ice cream. But then that really warm and hot day happened, and things were so busy, and you weren't able to go get ice cream. And that can be disappointing. Or maybe your friend promised that you could borrow their toy, but then they didn't follow through on their promise, and that was also disappointing. Well, today we're gonna be learning about how, yeah, it's hard when promises aren't kept, but we have a God who keeps his promises. And so even though he made those promises years ago, he is still keeping them today. So we're gonna learn all about those promises, but first, let's watch this video. Welcome to an all new season of Hammer Time. My name is Jack Hammer and I'm an expert in power tools. <laughs> ah, yes, and this is my little bro Sl Sledge. What are you laughing at? <laughs> well, you said you're an expert. I think you meant expert. No, I meant expert. Jack, that means you used to be Bert, like. That's the name everyone called you, and now you go by something different. Right. Back in 79, everyone used to call me Bert. Really? No. Now, let's get to our power tool for the day. Sledge, help me find that electric slaw. He means saw. It's right here, Jack. Wait, it wasn't plugged in. Is this your phone? Oh yeah, sorry Jack, I needed to plug my phone in to get the latest update. The what? You know, the latest software update with all the new features and changes, it's going to be awesome. Right, well, my electric saw was up chucking too. Updating. Your saw is updating? Of course, all new changes coming. Um, like, when you press this button, you get all new hairstyle. Uh-huh. Seriously, watch, but look over there. Okay, Jack. Come on, turn around. <sighs> beep, beep, boop, 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 beep, beep, beep. Weep, weep. Wah, 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 wah. Weep, 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 weep. Okay, take a look at my new haircut. Whoa. Wow, Jack. Pretty impressive, huh? Where did you get that? And why did you have that wig so readily accessible? But that's not all. Can't wait. This electric saw can predict the feature. Feature? Feature. Oh, future. Yep. Come on, Jack. Let's just do the show. This is the show. And now my electric saw is going to predict what you're going to eat for dinner tonight. Oh, wise electric saw that can predict the feature. What will my little bro Sledge have for dinner tonight? You will have Ryobi sandwiches for dinner. That sounds delicious. I was actually gonna say disgusting. Look, Jack, your saw doesn't have to have any changes. In fact, it's pretty awesome just the way it is. It powerfully cuts stuff. When you pick it up, you know it's going to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Yes, but everything in the world changes. Not everything. Jesus never changes. His love, power, and truth are the same today just as it was thousands of years ago. Jesus never changes. In fact, that's what our kids are learning about today in their lesson. Wow, never thought of it that way, little bro. Thanks. You got it. What's up? Gotta go. Dinner just got delivered to my house. Nice, what is it? Uh. <gasps> what? Ryobi sandwiches. 
So our promise for today is that Jesus never changes. It's so good to know that we can trust him no matter what. And he is dependable, so dependable, you guys. And this is one thing I really want you guys to get today is that Jesus never changes and he can be trusted no matter what. And today we're gonna to be learning about how his love and his power and his truth never changes. But first, we do need to find out what you gotta know. So let's go. What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? Hey kids, I'm Big Ray, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. I am so excited to be starting a brand new series called Power Promises. We're gonna learn some powerful promises of God. You ready? Today, we're gonna learn about how Jesus never changes. So every time today, you hear someone ask you, what you gotta know, you tell them. Jesus Christ will never change. The world is always changing. There's something new every day. We got new hats, new glasses, and new hair? I don't think this is right. It's crazy out there. That may be true, but Jesus, he's the same every day. We can always count on him. So every time today, you hear someone ask you, what you gotta know, you tell them. Jesus Christ will never change. And that right there is what you gotta know. I'm Big Ray, and I'll catch you on the flip side. What you gotta know. All right, you guys, let's stand up and say the what you gotta know together. So everyone up, Jesus Christ will never change. I want you guys to memorize that. One, because it's gonna be popping up through our lesson, but two, because this is so important, an amazing promise we need to really grab hold of. That's why it's our first promise in our lesson. So we're going to get into our Bible story and today's Bible story, I get to read to you guys from the Bible. It is found in John chapter eight, verse one through 11, okay? But it's a Bible story about how Jesus heals and forgives a sinful woman. So why don't you guys actually, if you need to pause the video, I want you guys to find this in your Bible and read along with me because I'm going to be reading it right from the Bible and talking about it a little bit, but you guys can follow along with me. So pause the video. If you need to go grab your Bibles, it's going to be in the new Testament, John chapter eight, verse one through 11. Let's read it together. So this story is about how compassionate Jesus is and how he loves us and how that doesn't change. So verse one says, then they all went home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Okay, so this is a little bit of like context from some of the other stuff before this chapter. But now we get into the story. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. So Jesus enjoyed talking with people and teaching them about God. Verse three, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. Now the Pharisees were the religious leaders of that time. And what they were supposed to be doing was supposed to be setting a good example for all the other Jewish people in that time. But this woman that they throw in front of Jesus was caught in adultery and that was a sin. So basically she was the girlfriend of many married men. And so she was sinning and also causing other people to sin. It was not a good situation. And so they throw her in front of Jesus and they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery and the law of Moses commands us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? Well, back then stoning was a really mean way that they actually killed people. So they're like, well, way back in the old Testament, the Bible tells us we're supposed to kill her if we catch her doing this. And they're trying to trap Jesus. Okay. So verse six says they were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. So they knew that Jesus was a really caring and loving person, but he was teaching people about the Bible. And so they wanted to trap him so that they could accuse him. And well, as we know, eventually kill him. Okay. So it was kind of a, a tricky question, but Jesus bent down and started to write in the ground with his finger. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us what it was that he was actually writing. I wonder what he was writing, but it doesn't tell us. And when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. 
And again, he stooped down and wrote in the ground. And at this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. So all the people that were crowded around, like yelling at her and like, yeah, we should kill her. We should kill her. She's a bad person. Well, when they heard what Jesus said, they just kind of started like looking around and, and slowly left one by one with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up again and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Because they had all left. No one, sir, she said. And neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now go and leave your life of sin. Now, I don't know if you guys realize this, but Jesus was perfect, right? He was without sin. So if anyone was going to condemn her, it would be Jesus. All the other people knew that they had sinned, and so they left because they're like, well, I'd, I've done bad things too, and they left. But Jesus was perfect. And instead of condemning her, he chooses to forgive her. He chooses to show grace and mercy because he loves her. But not only that, he also commands her. He said, go leave your life of sin. Stop living like this. Go live a better life. Don't be bad. Don't do bad things. He gives her a second chance. So this is a really cool story. And there's some difficult things to understand in this story, but it's really cool and it shows the love of God. Okay, well, we're going to talk more about this lesson in a little bit, but we need to do the power verse. So since you guys have your Bibles, close them up and place them in front of you. And when I say go, we're going to be looking for Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Ready? Go. All right, you guys, once you have your Bibles, and I hope you found, so this is in the New Testament, hope you found Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Let's read it together. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is a promise that we get from the Bible, that Jesus never changes. He always loves you. You can always trust on trust in him. Like, Jesus loves the people from years ago, right? He loves the people today, and he loves the people that are going to be born years from now, okay? Jesus never changes. He never stops loving you, and he never stops forgiving you. So this is an incredible ch promise, and I want us to remember that. So if you guys can write this verse down, Hebrews 13, verse 8, write it on a sticky note, place it on your mirror so you see it and remember it. It's so good. All right. Oh, yeah. what you gotta know? What you gotta know? Jesus Christ will never change. Nice job. Okay, let's get into our lesson for today. So we're talking about how Jesus never changes and how that's based off of the power verse we just read. But have you guys noticed how much things change? I mean, let's even talk about clothing styles, right? And you know, what's in style? Things that maybe your parents wore years ago when they were kids are starting to become in style again now. It's really interesting. But hey, let's check out this picture and see what people wore a long time ago. Wow, what an interesting thing to wear. I'm honestly kind of glad that we don't, the most of us don't wear that all the time, right? I mean, things have really changed over the years, especially in regards to clothes. But have you guys maybe noticed some really cool cars? I mean, it's summertime. Sometimes you got the fancy sports cars that go really fast or the ones where the top rolls back and as you're driving down the road, your hair can be blowing in the wind, right? There's some cool cars out there. But let's take a look at the, one of the very first cars that were made. And that is a super old car, okay? We don't drive cars like that anymore. Matter of fact, we don't even really see cars like that anymore. Sometimes we see some older cars from even like the 50s or the 60s, right? And they're kind of cool. You might see them in the summertime. But these are really old cars and man, have cars changed. But one of the really big ones that I've noticed just in my lifetime is technology, how technology changes. So this, this is a cell phone, right? You recognize it right away. You're like, oh yeah, that's a cell phone. Because a lot of us have cell phones now, like almost everybody. Matter of fact, you guys might even have a cell phone. But look how thin it is, right? And it's it's pretty light and just fits in your pocket really nicely. I like cell phones. I'm glad that this is the kind of technology we use today. We're pretty fortunate. But let's take a look at one of the first cell phones. 
It's huge. Look how big that cell phone is. That does not fit in your pocket ever, right? And it has changed from that to this in like just a couple decades. It's insane. So we can all agree that things change. And I think we can especially agree that people change. Sometimes they change from the inside, but more noticeably, we change from the outside. Just in like growing up, how much have you changed from your baby pictures till now? Matter of fact, do you wanna see one of my baby pictures? It doesn't even look like me. I bet you wouldn't even be able to, write, like you couldn't look at my baby picture and tell it's me. Let's take a look at it. See, my hair, I'm, well one, I'm really small, okay? I'm like maybe two years old, but my hair isn't even the same. This is my natural hair color now, and that was my natural hair color then. I was blonde then, what? So I think we can all agree that we change a lot, okay? And like I mentioned earlier, sometimes we even change from the inside. Like sometimes our friends change and from the inside emotionally or what they like or don't like or how they act, we grow up and we change. And sometimes our friends might even stop being friends with us because of it. It can be really, really sad. Well, our power verse talks about someone who never changes. And no matter what happens around us, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Hebrews 13, eight. And so what that means is that Jesus' love never changes. So in today's story, we learned about the love Jesus had for people, even sinful people, people who do bad stuff, because I do bad stuff sometimes right? And I bet you, you've made mistakes too. But Jesus loves us. He does. And we know that because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus loves people, even the people that sometimes we think are unlovable. And no matter what you have done, I want you guys to know that Jesus loves you. Have you guys ever felt like you made a mistake, right? Maybe you did. And you confess, you ask your friend or your parents to forgive you or however that goes. You maybe even ask Jesus to forgive you, right? You confess it. But you still, I don't know, you feel a little uncomfortable still because, I mean, you just did a bad thing. And then we don't really feel comfortable going to Jesus and asking him for help or praying to him because we feel guilty that we did something bad. That, well, why is Jesus going to help me? I, I did something I know he doesn't want me to do. Well, in our... Bible story today, we learn that Jesus forgives. He gives us second chances. He forgives us and we get love no matter what. So his love never changes, but also Jesus' power never changes. So I don't know if you guys know this, but Jesus hasn't lost his power. And I hope you guys can experience his power regularly. But when we get old, well, we get weaker. I mean, let's be honest. The older you get, Well, most of the time we can't jump really high or run super fast because our body gets older and we just get weaker. But Jesus has been around since the very beginning of time and he is still very powerful. He can perform the same miracles that he did in the New Testament and he can perform the same miracles he did in the Old Testament. His power never weakens. He only gets stronger. But finally, Jesus' truth never changes. Now, we live in a world where truth does change, where sometimes one thing is right, and then sometimes that same thing is wrong. And, oh man, I mean, it's really hard to try to figure out what the world thinks is true. But Jesus, his truth never changes. And sometimes people think that the truth in the Bible doesn't apply to today because it was written so long ago. And matter of fact, even today, people think it's okay to make up your own truth, that each person has their own truth and you can just make it up. Well, John 14 verse six says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus is speaking and he says in John 14, six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth and that never changes. The words of the Bible are still so important today as they were many years ago. But the last thing I want you to remember is that, man, Jesus doesn't change. In all the things of the Bible, you might read this and go, well, that was 2,000 years ago. Yeah, but it doesn't change. Jesus doesn't change. He never changes. And it's such a good foundation for you guys to build your life. You can build your life trusting Jesus when other people fail you, when other people don't follow through on their promises. 
Know that Jesus does, and you can trust the truth in the Bible because it doesn't change. So why don't we just close in some prayer, and then we'll move on to our challenges. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the wonderful day today. Lord, I thank you for all the kids that are watching here and that you want them to know that you never change, that that is a promise they can hold on to, that Jesus, you love them no matter what, that you forgive them and you want them to have a good life and to choose joy and to choose to do good things and not sin. But no matter what, you give grace, you love them, your power is ever present and strong and your truth stays the same. So Lord, I just pray that each child would grab hold of that promise that you never change and they can hold on to that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's move into our, oh, yeah. what you gotta know. What you gotta know. Jesus Christ will never change. Nice job, you guys. Okay, I only have one challenge for you this week and it is our notebook challenge. So today's notebook challenge says, I am alive with Christ. So this is one of the I am's, who we are in Christ. And it says, I am alive in Christ. And it's found in the book of Ephesians, chapter two, verse five. So go look up that verse in your Bible and read it with your family. But write this verse at the top of your notebook. I am alive with Christ. And I just drew a little picture down here of a girl going, I'm alive, woohoo! Because <laughs> Jesus gives us life, right? And as we learned today, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, forever. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next time.